This is something we've been dreaming about for years. Witness the excitement. Holy smokes! To lift that trophy is an incredible feeling. Welcome to Major League Soccer. When all the looking for the shot. Goal! It's in the back of the net. Goal! The champions have repeated. The Columbus Crew opening the door, building a new era of American soccer. Landon Donovan shoots. Goal! I'm the happiest kid on earth right now. There was Rosario, the shot, score! Yeah, I do believe I've still got another challenge inside me. It's Becca! It's a beauty! It's official Miami. Thierry fires! Martinez switches it over to his left foot. Santos! Carlito! We are witnessing history. We back, baby! Kaylin, we back. Welcome on into the MLS preview presented by AT&T. Susanna Collins alongside... My guy, Kalen Carr, feels good to be uh, back next to you in well, the studio, I just man. Say, I never get tired of looking at those old school oh, 25th anniversary MLS highlights. So good. And some of the throwback kits. But we're back. Fantastic. Like we never 25th left. 25th season. I know. 25th season. Yeah. Can you believe it? Uh, so much to be excited for looking ahead to 2020. But the biggest thing that I'm excited about, we've got two new teams. Two new teams, people, <laughs> entering the league in Inner Miami and Nashville SC. And, uh, yeah, these are great cities, yeah. man. Yeah, and you've spent a lot of time in one of them. I, I sure I've been have. seeing on Instagram a little all bit. of the uh, trips to Nashville. What, what can people expect? Oh, a party. A party, you guys. Nashville is going to throw the biggest MLS party you ever did see. Everything that they have done has been big, from expansion draft to the actual draft when we went to Jack Mayer's house <laughs> and surprised him with a busload That's of supporters. The way to come at MLS. I mean, everything they've done, they've just done it in this massive, massive way. And we know that we've got some uh, celebrity uh, VIPs that are going to be in attendance in Nashville. Uh, Charles Esten singing the national anthem. Okay, hit, okay, okay. Of, uh, Nashville. Well, fame. You know, so yeah. it's going to be 50,000 people at Nissan Stadium. It's going to be a party. You, but there's also some celebrities on the other side of the expansion uh, Miami. duel this year. And, of course, most notably, David Beckham. I've uh, heard of him. He who has caused me much MLS Cup pain and torture over the years. <laughs> uh, but we'll let that go for now. I, I'm excited to go to uh, Miami this year. Oh. And I just I was re reflecting back. I remember, do you remember when we went to Orlando for the All-Star Game yes, last year? Yes, sure do. As we're walking in. The Miami Vice City supporter uh -huh. crew do a march to the match before the team even exists. Yeah, it's great. So the supporter culture is already in you place. You know week one going at LAFC, they're going to have some fans there. It's going to be great. Yeah, gonna Two be awesome. awesome, awesome cities. Um, it's also been an incredibly busy offseason. And if you haven't been paying attention, what's wrong with you? But also don't worry because uh, we got you covered. Check it out. At the end of last season, we said goodbye to some legends. Zlatan and Rooney returned to Europe, while Demarcus Beasley, Nick Raimondo, Tim Howard, and Bastian Schweinsteiger sauntered off into the sunset. Then the spending spree started. Record-breaking signings for five clubs this season saw Liga MX superstars cross the border in the form of Alan Pulido to SKC and Lucas de la to Columbus. Cincinnati broke the bank to bring over Dutch forward Jurgen Locadia. The union returned a familiar face in Jamiro Montero and Vancouver brought home Canadian favorite Lucas Cavallini. But by far the biggest signing of them all was Mexican sensation Javier Chicharito Hernandez, finally making the move stateside with the LA Galaxy. For example, I signed for almost uh, three years plus one. Imagine four more stars in this batch. It will be awesome, it will be cool. The trades came in hot and heavy this offseason too. Darwin Quintero was sent south to the Dynamo. Austin Trusty is now mile high with the Rapids and Fafa Pico made his way to the Big D. Atlanta dealt two championship midfielders with Darlington Nagby going to Columbus and Julian Gressel heading up to the nation's capital. Six clubs will have a new man on the touchline. Ronnie Dyla took over in New York. Rafael Wicke opens up in Soldier Field. Ron Jans resigned from FC Cincinnati. Tom Ramos leads the new look Dynamo. Oscar Pereja looks to resurrect Orlando. And the French legend Thierry Henry looks to breathe new life into the Montreal impact. But Kaylin, all eyes have been on Nashville and Miami. From the expansion draft through preseason, everyone wants to see what the new kids on the block have in store. Nashville brought in a couple of foreign names in Hani Mukhtar and Randall Leal to 
to bolster their midfield. Then they turned their attention to MLS experience, trading for household names Dax McCarty and Walker Zimmerman. Finally, they made the biggest splash on draft day by showing up in a bus, I was on it, to Jack Mayer's house to formally announce him to the world. In Miami, sporting director Paul McDonough got his man, bringing in Rodolfo Pizarro to bring dynamism to the team, while at the same time bringing in sturdy veterans Will Trapp, Luis Robles, and Roman Torres. Can Diego Alonso get this collection of foreign and domestic talent to compete with the rest of MLS? Time now for our AT&T call to the field. And for that, we are so excited to bring in our third member of the team today, former MLSer, legend all around, Mr. Bobby Boswell. Bobby, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to be here with you guys. Excited to get this, uh, this MLS season off to a start. Wait, yes. Bobby, I can tell in the background, it looks like you're at Chingy's I've been there. Pitch 25. Where's Chingy at? Is he in the background playing bags? Yep. I can hear it, the bags. Yeah, no, he, uh, he, he's, he's, his legs are so bad, he's not allowed on the soccer field anymore. Uh, doctor's orders, so, uh, you know, we can't get away from the game. We try, and, and it gets, we get pulled back in, and here we are uh, back on a pitch uh, across the street from the, the BBVA stadium, ready to go. I love Chingy. Shots fired. Chingy not here to defend I know. himself. Poor yeah. guy. But he's all right. He's a legend. In that bar is awesome, though, yeah. by the way. Yeah. I don't know. Have you been there yet? Oh, I've been there, yeah. It's so fun. Free drinks? Are you kidding I'm, me? I'm a little jealous about yeah. you right now. I'm, although we might not get the free drinks anymore. <laughs> not free anymore. Drinks. <laughs> <laughs> not after this conversation. <laughs> Bobby, so I, I got to ask you. We got the big match, opening match in Houston this weekend. LA Galaxy, a matchup you and I both don't enjoy. Uh, but Chicharito coming into town, what, can, uh, what do you think his time in MLS is going to be like, and what's the mood like in Houston leading up to opening day? Well, I can tell you what, there's been buzz all around uh, since he signed. I know that it's a sellout uh, for the game this weekend. People are, are super excited. I've already heard rumors that people are they're looking for uh, which hotel the team is staying at. They're going to have to ramp the security up there. Uh, there's a huge, huge Mexican population in Houston, and they love their soccer players, and none, uh, none bigger than Chicharito. So uh, the Dynamo, on the other hand, aren't as thrilled about playing against him. But from a standpoint of the fans and, and the excitement, uh, it's a real buzz in the city right now. All right, well, you and I know a thing or two about being underdogs against the LA Galaxy. So hopefully, wah, wah. Uh, for our <laughs> sake, the Dynamo squad can come through. I got to ask you as well about your ex-manager with Atlanta United, Tata Martino, now with the Mexican national team, of course. He came out with some comments that got some people, especially in the Mexican media, riled up a little bit, saying that MLS and Liga MX were parallel leagues on the same par. I'm not sure a lot of people like to hear that. What did you make of his comments? Well, I think that Tata has an interesting perspective on it. Uh, I do think that the, the leagues are, are they're getting closer rather quickly. I think if you look at some of the, the changes to Liga MX with the uh, foreign players, uh, the MLS is, is set up to benefit from that greatly. Uh, if you look at over the past few years, especially from the time I retired, I retired, I, I call it the Tam Gam uh, assassination of the American old guy. Uh, you don't have players like me that can just that can just hang around and continue to get a paycheck. Uh, you got to give credit to Jeff Lorenowitz and Kyle Beckerman. But outside of that, you, you know, the league has gone a lot younger. Uh, if you can't produce day in and day out, uh, the league can go find a guy outside of the league that that will come in and step right in and, and make it a better league. So um, you know, it's a credit to the league for for being able to find these guys and bring them in. They raise the level of the league. But uh, I don't I don't know if I'm ready to say we're there yet. Some of these big Mexican teams, the, the powerhouses that they are, um, we'll find out pretty soon in, in Champions League how we uh, how we're comparing to them on the field. All right. Well, Bobby, you said, you know, we're not maybe not quite there yet in terms of uh, where we're at against Liga MX. But which guys from Liga MX are you going to be keeping your eye on? Who do you think is going to going to be big performers? Well, obviously, uh, there's there's you know, a lot of guys that have come in. I, I think we were talking about earlier at least uh, at least 10 guys that I've really uh, keeping my eye on. I think overall they're going to bring the level up. And these are guys that play week in, week out at a really high level. So MLS uh, is going to be fortunate, I guess, to have them come in. Some of the center backs uh, really in the playmaking position. You got Flores in D.C. that uh, I think he's got some big shoes to fill. but. 
Um, Cavallini up in, uh, up in uh, Vancouver. I'm not so sure how the big guys are going to do, but I expect Polito to score a lot of goals. Um, uh, the real one I'm excited about is Zella Ryan and Columbus. I think that that Columbus team, what they've done by adding him in there, a guy from Tigris that is, is a proven winner, uh, I think Columbus could be a, a dark horse to win the East with how good he is and, and some of the pieces they've added. So. Uh, overall, I mean, just, I'm just really excited to see what, what these guys do. There's a lot of buzz about them that there wasn't in years past, so I'm eager to see uh, if they can produce and, and, you know, do guys come in and bully them? I don't think so. I think this year uh, these guys, every single one of them goes out and performs as they're expected to do. So many new players coming from Liga MX that you almost forget about the ones that have come just a couple years yeah. in the past. You think of Rui Diaz. I'm interested in Darwin Quintero coming down to Houston. How do you expect him to change that Houston attack? Uh, he's one of my favorite players. I played against him when he was at Santos Laguna and he torched us. Um, I was excited when he came to, to Minnesota. Uh, I, I love the, that he, you know, he, he sees the field in a different way. He chips goalies. He tries things all the time. I think that teams are just going to have to be aware of him. You know, they had Kyoto out there, and he was kind of a similar player uh, as Elise. Quintero's uh, a different beast. He comes inside. He wants to be more of a playmaker, be involved more. So I think if he takes a little bit of the pressure off of Elise, uh, because uh, Elise always starts hot and then teams figure him out. They double and triple team him and Minotas doesn't get service and they're not as effective. If Quintero can, uh, can take some pressure off, then there'll be a team that competes all year and, and teams won't be able to figure them out as easily. 13 games on tap this weekend. Let's take a look at them all. This one starts us off. D.C. hosting Colorado. Some new faces on both sides. Colorado ended the season very strong. We'll see uh, what they can do at Audi Field, Kaylin. All right, Suze. I'm going to be looking to Montreal for the league coaching debut of the French legend Thierry Henry. He will be going against Christian Penilla, Gustavo Bo and company. Bruce Arena looking to get them back in the playoffs and maybe make a deep run. Oh, all eyes on this guy, Chicharito! Houston Dynamo hosting the LA Galaxy and Chicharito. You're going to be at this game, Kaylin. Oh, you know it. Got to be up there. And look, I got to also know you, that, look, there's a lot of interesting, exciting new players in MLS, but there's one Mr. Reliable, Chris Wondolowski. He'll be going against Toronto FC who seem to always be going to MLS Cubs. Josie is back. Watch Making out. Making a habit of it. Uh, how about FC Dallas taking on Philly? Jesus Ferreira could make a big jump in 2020, but this is also Kalen the Fafa Pico Bowl facing off against his former team. Look at those moves. Uh, slow feet, don't so eat. Good. Love it, Fafa. Orlando is going to be set to take on Real Salt Lake and a lot of changes for Real Salt Lake, but you got to know they got Rusnak and Krylak they They're going to be getting goals. They yeah. can do that. Oh, I'm so excited for this one. Nashville making their MLS debut against Atlanta United. That's a big Fox game Saturday night. I mean, look at that. Jack Mara. I was there. I was at his house when they drafted him. But they have a tall task against Joseph Martinez. Oh, my gosh. He's been a goal-scoring machine lately. Uh, when isn't he? Two top Liga MX players making their MLS debuts. Yes, Cavallini has made his way as the designated player to Vancouver. And then Alan Polito, the new big signing number nine, sporting Kansas City fans have been waiting for. How about Columbus taking on NYCFC, a nice little Eastern Conference battle. Uh, Lucas Zalarian, did I say that right, Caitlin? Zalarian. Zalarian. Yeah, you got you it. it. And there's Ronnie Dyla, he's NYCFC's new coach. I like this guy. He's got uh, a lot of energy. NYCFC, maybe supporter shield could favorites. Be, I don't know. Be. LAFC might have something to say about it. New York Red Bulls will be taking on a revamped Cincinnati side. New York Red Bulls, always a good bet to make the playoffs. And then you add Locadia to FC Cincinnati. Can they make a push? You never know. There's the defending champs, though. They are taking on the new look Chicago Fire. Um, we need to talk about Raphael Wicke and his hair because <laughs> that hair is something special. That's we'll, a see good how, uh, we'll see how Chicago does. LAFC will be defending their home court and their MLS all-time single season record points 72 last year oh, against that guy no he's not going to be playing <laughs> but he's looking good in the pink uh, adolfo pisaro and company will be looking to 
uh, spoil the party on the West Coast. And we wrap things up on the weekend with Portland hosting Minnesota. Uh, Diego Valeri back for Portland, which is very good news for them. And of course, we've got uh, Mason Toy looking to build on a solid 2019. I want to see those maracas again. Got to love that celebration. Yeah. Welcome to MLS Miami and Nashville. Okay. I am excited. These are two incredible cities that, quite honestly, I just love visiting. But beyond that, soccer staking its claim in Nashville and Miami is a massive win for the sport in North America. And here's why. Ah, Miami, a melting pot of cultures from Cubans to Dominicans to Costa Ricans. All of them share one big thing in common, a love of the beautiful game. As America's Latino population expands, Miami becomes an emblem of what soccer and MLS will look like in the future. Add into the equation a billionaire ownership group, the David Beckham factor, a city that embraces glitz and glamour. Yeah, the stars are destined to shine both on and off the field. Then there's Nashville, Music City. It's an entertainment town. Music and sports go hand in hand. At an influx of young, hip, diverse people moving to the city looking for a young, hip, diverse team to support, you got Nashville SC. I've been lucky enough to spend some time with the supporters there, and they are a direct reflection of the city itself. With 50,000 people expected at the home opener, Nashville has already wrapped their arms around this team. So whatever happens this weekend, one thing is true. MLS is better with Miami and Nashville in the mix. Welcome to the party. I'll see you soon. All right, let's welcome back my good friend and former teammate, Bobby Boswell, for our AT&T call to the field. Bobby, I know you never had any trouble with any attackers, but if you were looking out at the field in MLS right now, who would be your top five most dangerous attackers one-on-one? -on -one? Well, for me, the, the biggest shock to no one is uh, speed is really uh, something that troubled me. So all these guys are fast. They can, they can blaze. Uh, number five is Jordan Morris, uh, Seattle Sounders. He's found a way to improve year after year, especially coming back out, off his injury. Uh, he's incorporated being able to go inside and outside, and he's really uh, excelled at setting his other teammates up to, to score goals. At number four, I've got Michael Barrios uh, in Dallas. This guy had 15 assists last year, and that's before they added uh, FIFA Pico out there on the wing on the other side. So teams are going to have to respect him even more. I expect a big year out of him. Uh, at number three, we stay here in Houston to my guy, Albert Delis. There's never a, a person that he doesn't want to run at one on one. He finds himself in uh, 2v1s and 3v1s. That, that's how teams shut him down with the addition of Quintero. I expect him to have some more success this year if he gets hot. Watch out, the Panther Crawl will be uh, hot and alive here in Houston. At number two, uh, I call him Johnny Football. Other people call him the Scottish Messi. We've got Johnny Russell at Sporting Kansas City. I'm not sure Alan Polito will uh, be able to understand what he's got on the, on the wing. This guy can go inside, outside. He finds a way to always end up on his left foot. He's silky smooth. Uh, and speaking of silky smooth, number one is uh, none other than Carlos Vella. Uh, this guy, if you sit back, he'll score a golazo on you. He's a highlight reel waiting to happen. If you dive in, he dribbles around you. Uh, he'll dribble in the goal if you let him. Just ask San Jose. Uh, no offense to my guys out there, but this guy is a, a truly special player one-on-one. -on -one. Obviously, he has Dio Rossi on the other side, but uh, there's no one better in this league one-on-one -on -one than uh, Carlos Vella. I, I like it. I like it, Bobby. That's a pretty good list. I do have to push back on one omission, though. I got to ask you, dude. Noel Senior, what's up with that? Oh, see, I, I, I didn't say that's like a super sub, right? Uh, I didn't give any guys in the East any love. I, I was thinking Pania, maybe Royer. I'm not a big Red Bull guy. Uh, even Julian Gressel, but he might be further back this year. Uh, so I kind of left the East out. That's not a, a shout out to the West. It's just these are the guys that, that really have the, the, the most speed. That, that's something that a guy like me really struggled with. Uh, as you know, when we played against each other, I, I don't really catch guys when they get by me. MLS Predicts 6 presented by BetMGM, a weekly free-to-play game from Major League Soccer. Correctly predict the final outcomes of the six featured MLS matches along with secondary predictions such as which player a team will score first or how many total goals will be scored and you could win $50,000. Head on over to MLSPredict6.com and play for free. Kaylin Carr. I know you're excited about this one. Oh, I'm glad you can see the I can, intensity I can. in my eyes, because I'm ready for this. <laughs> I'm out for bragging rights Bring this it. year. Yeah. Bring it. Well, I, I, it's tough to pick 
opening week. But if I'm going to make one, uh, I've surveyed the scene, looked far and wide, and I got to go to Seattle. The Sounders defending MLS Cup champs going against my old club, the new look Chicago Fire. But it's going to be tough on this day. I need Jordan Morris. If you can hear me, <laughs> I'm just going to be honest, man. I need you to come through. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to Seattle at home. Was that an on-camera plea to Jordan Morris? you got to do it sometimes. Oh, my gosh. I love it. I'm here for it. All right. Uh, so, Kaylin, my pick, I'm going to go with D.C. United. They are hosting the Colorado Rapids. They're at Audi Field. I am really loving this Ola Kamara, Julian Gressel connection. Oh, I, like I think that that's going to be fun to watch this year for them. And Colorado, they, they ended the season very strong last year, but I think this is going to be just a little too much to overcome in week one. So I am going mm, with D.C. I'm like picking D.C. All right, let's move over to these secondary the picks. These secondary picks. We got. separate the people who are really paying attention. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go ahead with the first goal being scored in the Atlanta United against Nashville match. And I'm going to go with Nashville. 50,000 people at home pushing them on. I think Atlanta is a tough team, of course. May end up winning this one. But for the first goal, which is the only thing I'm being asked right now, I'm going to go with Nashville to get the party started at home. I love it. And if I have to make a pick, actually, on top of that, uh -huh. of who it is. I'm going to go with Walker Zimmerman. Uh, knows how to play for an expansion team. I think he wants to be the first one, maybe on a set piece. I know that's not even a part of the game, I but like I, it. I'm going to go a little further. Here. I like that. I like it. That's a confident. great pick. Yeah. That's a great pick. All right. You know who my pick is? My secondary pick? What do you got? Chicharito. Ah. Chicharito is going to score the first goal in the LA Galaxy's game against the Houston Dynamo. Chicharito, uh, he wants to make a big impression. Mm. in his first game, and I, I guarantee you that this guy's going to come, out, well, I come like, out flying. I like that because he hasn't scored in the preseason, so he's going to be hungry. He's hungry for some goals. To get off to a chicha, good start. Yeah. Chicha, I chicha, chicha. Like uh, you guys, for your chance to win $50,000, head on over to MLSPredict6.com. Hey, Suze. What? You know where I'm going to be this weekend? Where are you going to be? Saturday, I'm going to be back in Houston, H-Town where if you follow along exclusively on MLS's Twitter, you will be able to find me, Sidelines, <laughs> getting ready for Chicharito's debut at 3 p.m. Well, we can't miss that. Yeah. Chicharito cam. And, uh, guys, I am going to be in L.A. for LAFC taking on Inter Miami. I will be hosting ESPN's pregame wow. digital coverage. Big time. Look at that so you can uh, follow me there. And it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a great game. Also, guys, MLS announced a partnership with Second Spectrum as we send you off to watch opening weekend. Here's a look at what the future holds in highlights.